Hi. <laughs> it was a Friday a couple of years ago. I was sitting in a large room all by myself, and I was terrified. They told me I only got 70 minutes. In front of me was a paper and a pen. I was having my first exam. Two weeks after my graduation from high school, I found out I'm pretty dyslexic. That explained a lot, but didn't change a thing. I still had tremendous trouble with absorbing and remembering information. So I started playing with the question in my mind. What if from now on I stopped absorbing information? What if from now on I stopped reading? Stopped reading entirely, not even a Facebook post, a WhatsApp, an email, a textbook, nothing. And I'd like to ask you the same question. What would happen if from now on you stopped reading? What would happen from now on you will not listen to any lecture? How would this affect you? If you're a student and you stop reading all the textbook, all the summaries, all the slides, stop listening to all the lectures, it makes it very difficult to pass your exams. Same is true, of course, when you start working. It's getting even worse. Let's say you're a lawyer and from now on you stop reading any email, any textbook, anything, totally. Within a few months, you simply cannot do your job anymore. Of course, it's a silly question, to stop absorbing information. But the funny thing is that we're all doing this already at a somewhat smaller scale. There's too much information for us to process, so most of us only scan information. But by definition, you're missing information. And I recently spoke to an official. He said, well, I'd like to test this. So in the minutes, he put Article 2 from now on, We'll celebrate Valentine's Day on the 2nd of November. Did everybody read the articles? Everybody did. Is everybody agreeing with Article 2? And everybody agreed. So from now on, we will celebrate in our city Valentine's Day on the 2nd of November. And this is the reality that we live in. Moreover, most of us are easily distracted during reading. And you might experience something similar. During reading, you realize, oh, I have to call so-and-so. Oh, I have to do this and this. By the end of the page, you have no clue what you just read who had that experience before. Yeah? <laughs> You're not the only one. Our attention span is not much wider than 140 characters. And that's something to think about, or to tweet about. A different challenge that we have is that most of us find it difficult to remember the information. In fact, within one day, we forget about 70% of the information. Within one week, that's close to 80%. So let's say you're now reading a very fascinating article, and next Friday you're having a meeting about that. You can only recall about 20% of that. That is such a low score that you could easily decide not to read the article and just ask your co-workers five minutes before that meeting, hey, what's it about? You have the same comprehension level. To make things worse, when you process information from a screen, our productivity drops even further with 30%. We tend to read slower, we have a lower understanding of the text, and we forget the information even faster. You could say that, in a sense, we became illiterate again. We cannot cope with the tremendous amount of information that we need to process. And this fascinates me. We live in a knowledge society. We need to process information to do our job. Our job is to give a presentation. Our job is to write an article. Our job is to pass an exam, to give an argument, to make a decision. But in order to do that, you first need to process that information. You first need to analyze it and then remember it in order to apply it. And we live under the assumption that whenever we're processing information, absorbing and remembering it, that that process is going flawless. But working with more than 100,000 people around the globe, I can tell you that assumption is simply not true. And probably not from experience. We're too slow to read it all, we're easily distracted, and we cannot remember the information. And how is this affecting us? And the real question is, how does this affect our society? The fact is that we miss information. Could it be that the answers to our global challenges, like the environment, the economy, poverty, are buried in the articles that no one ever reads? According to a recent study from the World Bank, that scenario is not so far from the truth as you might think. The World Bank, as you might know, publishes yearly hundreds of studies, and has recently asked itself the question, how many people are actually reading our articles? So they started testing that. And the results were staggering. Oh, nearly one-third of all their articles that are public in the public domain are never, ever being downloaded, not even once. Only 13% of them are downloaded more than 250 times. That's astonishing. In an article in the Washington Post about this, 
They said, well, this is not only true for the World Bank. In every large industry, they're, published, they're, they're publishing a lot of big articles that no one ever reads. But let's go a step further. Of those people who are actually reading those articles from start to finish, how many percent will actually read it from start to finish and not scanning it? To my experience, that's less than 5%. And to go another step further, of those people who are actually reading that articles, how, how many people do you think can still remember that one day later, two days later, or a week later? And this is the reality that we live in. I like to call it this, uh, the illiterate society. Now, you could say, well, Mark, we simply need to pr produce less information to give shorter presentations, write shorter articles, and you're absolutely right. But at some point, you still need to process the information. And there's also a flip side to that. Publishers ask their journalists to write shorter, 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 and shorter articles. But what happened to the nuances then? What happened to the background information? We're getting more superficial here. In this new reality, where we're overwhelmed with information, the solution is not to ignore it. The solution, one, for sure, to write shorter articles. That's one solution. And the second solution is to produce a new method to make absorbing easier. And this is my quest for the past decade. How do we make sure information, absorbing it, remembering it, is easy? And that quest started 12 years ago when I watched the movie The Matrix. Anyone seen it? Yeah, sure, right? Who hasn't? In that movie, especially the first episode, Trinity, one of the main characters, wants to learn how to fly the helicopter, but she couldn't. So she plugs into the matrix, and bam, within seconds, she knows how to fly the helicopter. And that thrills, that thrills that's so appealing to me. How do you make sure that the information process from the information to your brain is optimized? How do you do that? Based on all the research that we uh, uh, researched and all the people that we worked with, we developed a new method called use Clark method. And with that method, we make it easier to stay focused. With that method, it's easier to remember information. I'd love to tell you more about that, but I don't have the time to explain the whole system. But that system consists of eight brain principles, and I'd love to tell you one of them. And it's called filling the void. What does it mean? Filling the void. Our brain thinks at the capacity between 800 and 1400 words per minute. So in one minute, you can think of 1400 things. The average reading speed, however, lays around 200 words per minute. Meaning, during reading, you have a lot of time left to think of other things. Oh, I have to call so-and-so. Oh, I have to do this and this. And by the end of the page, once again, you have no clue what you just read. One solution is filling the void, process information a bit faster. Let's say you're not reading at 200 words per minute now, but 3, 4, 5, 6, 700 words per minute. You have less time left to think of other things, and therefore you're more focused. If you have an increase in focus, it makes it much easier to comprehend the information. And this makes it much easier to remember the information. And this is, an, this is one of the key principles. Of course, if you process information too fast, your mind cannot comprehend the information. But if you process information too slow, your mind will wander off. It's finding the right balance. And I'd like to conclude this short presentation to invite you to make it your own quest. Make it your quest to the assumption that we live in that uh, when I see information, I would easily remember it. That's not true. Find your way of making absorbing information easier. You're in a starting point of your career, most of you. You have to process a lot of information. Make it easier to process the information. Yeah, start your quest on that. Thank you.